What is the iPhone 6S release date? Hello and welcome to the show. My name is Alex and this is TechFlow. So the iPhone 6S has been out two months and it's given us some ample time to test this thing. Let's see what we think of it. So, like with all S iterations of the iPhone, the design stays pretty much the same. There's only a few subtle changes like the S badge on the back of the phone and there's no FCC markings to get rid of the clutter. There is also a pink, uh, sorry, I mean rose gold coloured iPhone and it's exclusive to the iPhone 6S this far and that is the easiest way to tell them apart from any other phone. Like in Apple's S series lineup, it's not what's visible that's changed, it's what's inside that's changed. The new 6S uses what's called 7000 series aluminium which makes it stronger and so it won't bend as easily. We all know what happened with the last phone. And it also gives it some welcomed added weight. It's also a little bit taller and thicker than the previous generation iPhone 6 but pretty much any iPhone 6 case will work uh, with uh, the 6S, uh, what I've tried so far anyway. But other than that, everything else visually is the same. Button placements, camera, microphones, everything. The thing I've noticed most about this new iPhone is the new rapid Touch ID sensor. No, seriously, this thing is rapid. All you've got to do is literally place your finger on the home button for literally two milliseconds. And the phone has already read your fingerprint and you're on the home screen. Like honestly, this thing reads your fingerprint so fast, it's a little bit scary. It's sometimes a little bit annoying because if you want to read a notification and you put your finger on the home button to wait the phone to read said notification, the phone's just like, nope, and it puts you straight on the home screen. And you're like, I wanted to read that notification. Where the hell is it? Talking about the rapid touch ID, the phone itself is just absolutely rapid. It's got an eggs of RAM, which is plenty enough to handle iOS and anything you can throw at it. The GPU really benefits and shines with the extra power of the A9 chip and I've noticed a constant 60fps pretty much all over the operating system. Whether you're multitasking, on the home screen or in an application, it just flows. I really think Apple have nailed this phone. It's just so fast, so quick and responsive. Even coming from an iPhone 6, it's just absolutely rapid. Now there's two things that have changed on this phone and that's the camera and the display. The display is now rocking what Apple call 3D Touch and it basically turns your entire display into a pressure sensor. The screen still looks and feels identical to previous models but now you can apply force to access more information. Like in Safari or Messages, there's two gestures called a peek and a pop. So if you want to check out something, you can peek into it and if you press harder, you pop into that information and it puts it in full screen. Hopefully developers will jump on this and integrate it into their applications because it's very iOS oriented at the moment but I'm sure it will be a very valuable feature in the future. Hashtag no home button. Now the last said thing is the camera. That's it hardware wise. It's pretty much the same optics, the same microphones, same everything. It's just now 12 megapixels. iPhones generally take gorgeous photos and the camera app just flies. It's so simple and easy to use and it handles exposure, dynamic range and white balance with a breeze. So what I'm saying is pretty much anyone with any sort of camera knowledge will be able to pick up this phone point it and take a photo and it will pretty much just be perfect. Also with the jump to 12 megapixels, Apple have also squeezed in 4K, yes crispy 4K and I'll tell you now it's absolutely gorgeous. Colours pop, depth of field is awesome and it gives for a really cinematic look. It's detailed without over sharpening. And there's also a new feature in the app called live photos. I don't really use this myself but it's pretty cool. All you've pretty much got to do is just force touch or 3D touch on the photo and you can see the photo come to life. It records one and a half seconds before and after you take the shutter button and there's even a feature where if the gyroscope in the phone detects that you put the phone down right after taking the photo it won't record the live photo. You really do have to hold your phone there for one and a half seconds before and after you press the shutter button. And the last thing Apple, seriously, seriously give me a phone with live photos and 4K but you still offer a 16 gigabyte model. Are you taking the But really, other than that, 
that's it. It's a really, really, really solid phone and you just can't go wrong with it or pick a fault with it. It takes everything good from the 6 series, adds a few extra features and fixes what was wrong in the 6 series. It's just gorgeous. Well done, Apple. So guys, I hope you have enjoyed this video. If you have any questions or any queries about the iPhone 6S, you can put them down in the comment section down below or hit us up on Twitter at TechFoTweets. Be sure to drop a like rating on this video if you enjoyed it. My name's been Alex, you guys have been awesome, and I'll see you in our next video. Adios.